Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast. Providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space, you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. I recently joined as a member, and you can too. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with the advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And please put unprofessional development in the how did you hear about Podgo? That will give us a little finder's fee. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very informative episode Ooh. of Unprofessional Development. I'm Tedisco. And I'm Mealy. And today we have with us another one of our British friends, Ruth Swales. And we'll kind of talk in a minute about how I got to know her. But um, she's coming to us where it's where it's late there and barely afternoon here. I don't know. I'm still sleepy, Tedisco. I don't know about you. I'm sleepy all the time. I'm a teacher. Okay. <laughs> how are you doing today, Ruth? I'm really good. Thank you wonderful yeah we're doing good because we're we're this pretty much we're done we've got to just like turn in some keys and we're done for the summer so i uh, I don't have to see a student again unless i step into a mall right wow (laughs) yeah we've another we've a week off but then another seven weeks to go we are going to the wow yeah wow (laughs) you have a week off that's awesome yeah Yeah, it's half term half term here yeah gotcha yeah which but somehow there's three half terms is that right um, uh, there's six half terms a year. There's that's, uh, that, that, uh, those are sixth. Okay, I'm a math that's, teacher. That's, that's three terms. Yeah, three long terms with a half term in the middle. Yeah, so oh, we're okay. Oh, month. I guess so. We're on, the, okay. we're on the home straight now. Everybody okay. can kind of see summer, but it's not quite there yet. So you've got the <laughs> the final sixth to go. Then the final half of yeah. the final term, which lasts forever, always lasts forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> see, uh, the the American schedule is very American. We plug in a whole bunch of like nice days off early on and then after spring break we realize that we've used them all up and so yes not a day off from april till june yeah Ooh, it's, it's really a long while. yeah it's weird like the fall doesn't every time you turn around there's another like break or holiday and then you get to then the spring is always there's always big long stretches that is just you're like oh my god can it yeah. snow or can yeah, like the, the sewer back there. up something cat needs to happen i know sometimes it's scheduled there's like no days off even between winter break and spring break so, oh, no. uh, yeah, nothing happens. No, we're, yeah. Pretty, we're pretty lucky. We never usually go longer. The longest we've ever done is about eight weeks. That's um, a long and time. They, they are a killer. Eight week terms are not pleasant. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. usually around about six or seven, and that's about doable. Yeah. Yeah. So, in honor of Eric Carl, I decided to honor good old Eric Carl. You know, <laughs> we all, we, we, I know. R.I.P. Let's pour out some milk for our fallen home. Is that, is that what we pour out for him? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, so I'm going to have you describe your journey through education as if you were the very hungry caterpillar, and you can tell yes. us what you ate on each day or in each section of your um your education journey. Yeah, it's a really good question, actually. That thank um, you. Yeah. <laughs> but you dropped it on me this morning, so I've not had a lot of time to think about it. But that's really good, actually, because you can from you know you don't overthink it, do you? I was thinking, no. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think probably. When I was the egg, that was probably at at the point where I wasn't even realizing I was going to be a teacher Mm -hmm. uh, because I wasn't one of these people who was born knowing I was going to be a teacher. I actually didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, So I guess that was that sort of stage. And it was it was a kind of a a couple of things happened, really. I I left school, um, thought I might want to be a social worker. So I did some voluntary work and got a job in a factory and jobs that keep you busy and bring a bit of money in, but don't really give you a lot of job satisfaction, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to save up things to think about on the bus. I used to think I'll think about that later because it'll give me something to think about. Tomorrow. Oh my goodness! <laughs> As it was done. Um, but um, I was working in a women's refuge, uh, and I kind of I was helping out volunteering there, and I kind of gravitated towards the children. I always ended up with the children, and I sort of mm-hmm. ran little clubs and did days out and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was quite challenging because I was quite young, and, and they were obviously been through quite a lot of trauma. And and one of the workers there said, oh, you're really good with the kids. And then one day I just happened to bump into one of my friends who I've been at sixth form with. And he said, oh, what are you doing now then, Ruth? And I said, well, nothing really. I don't really know. And he said, you know what? You'd be really good at. You'd be a really good teacher. <laughs> I was like, all right. Actually, all right. I might try that. <laughs> so, literally went into into my old school, um, got a form, filled it in, and, and that was it. And got offered a place at uni, unconditional. So off I went. So that was me as the egg. Uh-huh. Um, and then I came out the other side, um, I suppose... I'm a little leaf. That was me um, sort of crawling along, trying to find a job as a newly qualified teacher. 
And that was quite hard because there were a lot of newly qualified teachers and not many jobs. Mm -hmm. And I got myself, uh, I suppose, when I thought about it, I thought about the, the sort of five pages of the fruit as being each school that I taught in before I became a head teacher. Mm -hmm. I taught in five schools. Okay. So kind of the first school would be, you know, that's when you're really honing your craft. So it, it was a brilliant school. Absolutely loved it. Um, in a in a mining community, one of the few mining communities left. Um, and the mine closed, the pit uh, coal mine closed that year okay. that I was there. Um, so that was tough. Yeah, um, yeah, I bet. For, for families, because mm -hmm. uh, it was actually the pit that a lot of my family had worked in. So I felt right at home. It was uh -huh. like, yeah. Home, really. um, but... I couldn't stay because it was a temporary job and there weren't very many uh, full-time permanent jobs around. So another one came up, which I applied for. So that would be school two. And at school two, I actually taught two year groups. So that's quite, it fits quite nicely. I taught <laughs> a mixed class of reception year one children. Mm -hmm. um, so And reception's so that, like our kindergarten, right? That's right. Yeah. Reception okay. is oh. four and five-year-olds and year yeah. one is like your five and six-year-olds. Right. Gotcha. Um, now, and, I'm, I'm geographically very challenged, but like what part, uh, of of the UK where you're working in? Uh, so I, I was working not far from where I was born, which is a, a small mining community just outside a place in Ch Chesterfield in Derbyshire. N uh, you probably, the nearest place you probably know is Sheffield. S still challenged. Northern <laughs> or Southern? Northern. Okay. Northern. okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Yorkshire. Okay. 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 Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love the um, terriers. I'm not too big on the pudding. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for using small words and explaining it. Yes. No, it's fine. Appreciate it. so I was just over the border in Derbyshire um, and I did that job for a couple of years, had had the um, the class with sort of two year groups in quite a small school. Well, I thought it was a small school, five classes um, and was kind of, it was okay, but it, it, it didn't excite me in the same way that my first job had done. I really loved that job. So I started having a look at the time they used to get this thing called the job sheet. It was always on the table in the staff room and I had a look and there was a job in there and I thought, well, that looks interesting. So I bobbed along to have a look at this school and that, that was a small school, two classes. Wow. Infants and juniors. <laughs> oh my. What? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the head teacher taught the junior class and the job that was coming up was to teach the infant class. Wow. Infants for you guys is what age? Uh, so in that school, because there was no nursery, it was four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, and seven-year-olds. Okay, okay. All in that's, one class together. That's quite a mix. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a, there are a lot of different stages. The fights uh, in the playground then, are very one-sided. Yes. <laughs> and then the juniors were um, uh, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, eleven-year-olds. Oh, so wow. Okay. See, in America, juniors means 11th grade. And I'm like, that's a weird mix. Yeah. So this <laughs> is almost. Juniors. So this is almost like... Like back to like in our time, he's our time's like little house on the prairie, like a one room school house, totally except, like it's, except it's except totally it's two like rooms. That. So you've got to yeah, individualize rooms, yeah. a lot of stuff. Is but then sometimes there's like wow. That's I suppose wild. that fits very nicely with the, the three plums because I had three year groups in the class. Okay, there so you go, nice. Yeah, like I planned it, uh -huh. um, and but that was it was kind of um, that was like a management job as well because of course if the head teacher was off, you were in charge. Yeah, uh, which was a bit terrifying because I'd only been teaching three years. Yeah, um, oh my. And then lots of responsibility, so lots of stuff outside the classroom. So I had to lead um, what we call foundation stage, which is early years, and key stage one, which is infants. Uh, I had to be the teacher governor. I looked after the special needs side of the school, so I was what we call the SENCO, looking after all the special needs children and, and making sure all their paperwork was up to date. So I learned a lot there. Wow, I bet. Uh, yeah, it's great. It was it was like going back in time. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the, the juniors were taught in what was the hall, um, and at lunchtime, everybody had to stand up and move the tables so we could all sit at the tables to eat dinner together. Wow. Yeah. It was, but it was very, I'm going to guess it was very familial though, right? Does everyone oh, felt totally. like, it, yeah. I, I walked in, I went to have a look at the school one evening after school. I thought, I'll go and see what this is like. And I walked in and lo and behold, the woman who was cleaning the tables in the junior classroom was my dinner lady from the last school that I worked at. So <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and it just felt like walking into home. It was yeah. just lovely. Yeah, and yeah. and and there was this real collegiate feel. So when I went there, there were fifteen children in the whole school. Oh wow, <laughs> nice. That'd be tough if you don't get along with one of them. Yes. Well, yeah, and and you've been <laughs> three years, so if they don't like you, they're stuck with you. Yes. Um, and if they don't like each other. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, but it it was basically at a point where the local authority who run the school said, if this school doesn't grow, it will close. So myself yeah. and the head were very much about you know, making the school popular, getting mm -hmm. people in. When I left, there were 80 children there. Oh, wow. So wow. it really grew, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the head left as well. 
Um, okay. I wasn't expecting that. He yes. went and got another job, and they said, "Oh, um, there's nobody to nobody's applied." So I ended up looking after this school for a while. So okay. That so that was a learning curve. Um, yes. So, so um, that's where you started as a head teacher. Uh, only for only acting. I'd not been do, I'd not been a head. I'd not been teaching long enough because they said, "Will you apply for the job?" And I just knew I didn't have the experience. I, mm -hmm. I, I knew what I didn't know, and it right. was a lot. <laughs> that's, that, yeah. Um, wisdom so, right there yes. yeah it was just and I mean it, it was a great job and if you want to learn a lot go work in a tiny school because you will learn everything you know yeah. I mean literally unblocking drains right. <laughs> um, you know the first time I was left in charge uh, the roof leaked and it was raining and, oh we, and it, leaked, it leaked on the electricity box we had a power Oof. cord oh, oh that's uh, fun um, and we were in the middle of cooking dinners as well because we used to cook the dinners for the children there Wow. And so I went to pick the phone up. I thought, don't panic, Ruth. I'll ring somebody up at the local authority. They'll help me out. Pick the phone up and the phone was dead because none of the electricity worked. Oh, there you go. I and see three horror movies start this way. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. And it was, it was before the days of mobile phones. But right. even if we had had mobile phones, we wouldn't have got a signal out there. Yes. So there's no phone box in the village. So I had to go to walk to the pub and knock on the door. Nice. You're not the first teacher to leave the school to yeah, go to the let's pub. Let's go to the pub. Oh, no. I mean, at least at least there's a pub close by, right? So yeah, that that's across the road. Yeah, there was a good. moment I, I, I sat in there and I did think I could stay here. It'd be all right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just bring the kids in. Yeah, it'd be right. I um, turned to the group of four year olds and said, "All right, everybody, be cool." Yes. Yes. <laughs> today we're gonna learn how to spell. We're gonna learn how to spell pint today, kids. Okay. <laughs> Just get a load of coke and some peanuts, and we're well away. There you right. go. <laughs> we're going to learn to sing some songs. I mean, Coca Cola, obviously. Right, exactly. You know, yes. Like uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so did that for a while, and then another job came up in another local school, which was it felt bigger, but it was only five classes, but it felt huge. Yes. And that, that was deputy headship, so that that would kind of be my, my going onto the, the the hungry caterpillars plum page. <laughs> uh, um, and there, I did a lot of the jobs that I'd done at Scarcliffe, but I did them in a bigger school mm -hmm. um, and got different experience. And that was over the border into another local authority and they worked differently. So I learned a lot of stuff there. And I did that for nearly six years. Then another job in a local school came up and it was another deputy headship. And at the time, my head teacher said, why are you going to be a deputy head? You're ready to be a head teacher. And I really felt like all my experience had been in these quite small schools and um this school was a very big school big urban school with a nursery mm -hmm. and i just i thought i'll go and have a look and i went to have a look and the head teacher was just this wonderful woman and uh, she, she greeted me at the door with this great big smile and she'd got bright purple spiky hair oh wow uh, so i'm gonna quite like you yes um, and uh we just clicked and it was a really interesting place because academically the results were really really strong but um del the woman i worked with was really keen to sort of develop the whole child Mm -hmm. And actually, I went to do. I went to be deputy, but I also went to oversee the foundation stage, which is our early years mm -hmm. um, in the nursery and for classrooms of children. And it was very formal, so I had the job of making it a bit more early years friendly, yes. which wasn't always easy because the results were good. And so, when you want to mm -hmm. make a change, oh yeah, don't mess with it. They're going to tell yeah. you it's not broke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. Um, but it wasn't. The results were good, but they could have been better. And right. it was almost like this leap of faith and persuading everybody, you know, come on, come on this journey, we're going to do it. Um, right. Yeah, I, spent, I, I did that for, that was five years. And the results were good because what they were measuring was like, English and maths. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, being able to, being able to like do like math or, or letters yeah, or whatever yeah. they were doing versus measuring are these kids happy, well adjusted, cared for, and all, and all those things, which is very rarely yeah, measured. Mean, Not saying that they the weren't. Whole, yeah, no, on the whole, they were, but it mm -hmm. could have been better. And it was very, very, everything in that school. She she just joined a couple of years before I did, and everything in that school had been geared towards um, results, SATs, yeah. academics, you know, making sure that we were the top of the, the league tables. Mm -hmm. And Dad and I were about more than that, so we wanted to do lots of, there was already a lot of music going on, but we wanted to do lots of sport. We wanted to do lots of um, sort of holistic stuff. So we got involved in something called Eco Schools, um, and we got our uh, Platinum Eco Schools Award. So we became sort of like um, Eco Warriors, you know, the, the school yeah. council um sort of used to tell you off if you left your lights on in your classroom and stuff like that <laughs> um, and we started a school council which is quite a radical idea there um 
Okay. And, you know, gave the children a voice and said, what would you like school to be like? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it, it was great. It was a really good five years, but I started to get a bit of itchy feet. And while I was there, I did some work for the local authority. And I went to visit a school and I fell in love with the school. And then the headship came up. So I went for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that I, I think of the headship in terms of the hungry caterpillar as my Saturday page with all of that sort of yeah, yes. range of everything. So, right. You know, there were definitely some pickles. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of cake. Um, yes. It was a real, just, wow, what an experience, you know, the yes. school on and running a school. Um, so, yeah, I loved it, but very, very challenging. Yeah, because um, as, a, as a principal or a head teacher, you can you have you have a to do list for the day, but one hour in something that was nowhere near right here here comes the here comes the fire let's let's put it out or whatever whatever yeah. it is yeah yeah I mean it's it's it literally was you go in with a list of things that you thought in your head I'm going to do this today and sometimes not even an hour sometimes five minutes you know <laughs> you're in the classroom teaching you're sorting out somebody's falling out on the gate you've got to go sort that out you know mm-hmm. you find yourself dealing with stuff like. Um, yeah. Uh, cows cows escaping from the local field onto the playground that was all <laughs> <I hate laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yes random uh, um or um dog fights outside school split a couple of those a couple of times people oh my brought God. dogs put them on leads and then the dogs started fighting each oh, other wow. they'd come and fetch me and say mrs swells the dogs are fighting anything oh. what am <laughs> i gonna okay. do yeah <laughs> exactly but you know or, or sorting out traffic and stuff but yeah never boring loved no, it no, <laughs> no. but yeah it's the Quite, quite a challenging job. So I did that for uh, six years and I was doing some work for the local authority as well then. I was helping out schools that had gotten a bit of a pickle. I was helping out new head teachers. Mm-hmm. I was sort of ment- doing sort of um, training sessions for new heads. Uh, okay. Doing a bit of mentoring around that. And that's when my friend suggested that I have a look at being an inspector. And okay. That's when I started to think about... Um, it was at the point where I kind of felt like if I kept on doing what I was doing with all the other stuff, I wasn't going to be giving my school my best. So okay. that's when I moved on. So I suppose okay. that was my cocoon moment where I just there you go. Like, yeah, still so thought about it. That <laughs> <laughs> um, I just thought, actually, shall I give it a go? And, and I remember having a conversation with my husband, and he said, "Well, if you don't like it, you can always go back to headship. You know, but try it and see." Mm-hmm. So I did, and that would be eight years ago, um, and I've not really looked back. So I suppose I, I kind of went into the cocoon and came out and. Uh, transformed into a consultant, an advisor, an inspector for a while, um, an author. There we go. Really, yeah. There we go. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I do have a question, and yeah. I don't know if any of us know the answer, but I'll throw it out to all the science teachers. So caterpillars aren't that smart, right? <laughs> when a this caterpillar, is when a caterpillar starts like making a chrysalis, does it know it's going to turn into a butterfly or does it just start oh. spitting webs on itself I going, what am I doing? Well, sentience. I, mean, I think it's just one of those urges. It doesn't know what it's doing. It just does it's, it. Doesn't. Just does it. Right. It's got to be a weird day. And then he, and then he like he's confused when like all of a sudden like he can fly when he when like before he yeah. was just eating right. leaves and plums it just and starts to melt within a chrysalis. Yes, yes, yes. In a in a sort of um, I was thinking about this earlier and thinking I suppose you've made me reflect and think about the fact that every single thing along that journey kind of transformed into what I do now. You know, so um, literally everything I do now I kind of draw on that experience of that that twenty years that went before it. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah. it, my journey is kind of like the very hungry caterpillar too, in that each place I've stopped at, I've gained weight. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't know how my journey. Too, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know how my journey is like the very hungry COVID, caterpillar. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So we kind of alluded to it, um, boys and girls. I always, I always assume there's there's mostly just boys and girls listening to this podcast, not grown ups. But anyway, um, so I met Ruth on on the Twitter as is as is my thing to do, and she put out there one time we're having like a staff room zoom does anyone want to go and i'm like oh yeah that sounds interesting and then she's like well you know i'm in britain so it'll be at like 7 a.m and i'm like oh god okay because our schedule had been due to zoom you know i teach high school but they since the kids didn't have to get on buses when we were in zoom our schedule was skewed and so i said sure i'll go so i would only go maybe like once maybe a week or every every week or two and I, and I would go but Ruth was doing it every day and so for I don't know how many weeks during you know lockdown quarantine whatever you want to call it every day at, 80 days in total or 88 I think something like that okay yeah. so and it was it was noon your time I think right 
So you guys yeah, were half, at half past, half past twelve, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So you guys were just eating what you're calling a dinner, but we call lunch or whatever. So just yeah. having your, your your afternoon meal and anywhere from what, like four to like ten people, maybe with Yeah, we, we average I mean, I think the most we ever had was about twenty, but we used to average wow. around about ten most days. Um and we got some towards the end there were some people coming literally every day. It was yeah. regular, you know. And then you got some people who sort of came at the beginning. And then dropped out because they had to go back to school and then right. came at the end and all sorts. But yeah, some, very few people only came once, which, which I thought was quite nice because yes. I didn't get anybody else. Yeah. And how many of them did you know, like in real life prior to? Oh. Yeah. Um, the first one, there was probably all but one person I'd either worked with or I'd met. Okay. But after that, over the course, I mean, I was trying to work out at the end of it, I reflected, and I think we must have had well over 100 people over the course of the, wow. the time that they're there, and most of them I hadn't met. Right. Um, it was via Twitter. Yeah. yeah. So there were sort of some regulars, and then some people dropped in and out. Yeah. So that, yeah, it was good fun. It was. It was really, labor it, of love. It was nice, because I mean, you know, and I didn't know anybody, but you guys are very welcoming, and it was just something to kind of like, in a crazy time where we were all just struggling with dealing with the the virus and dealing with how do you teach during the virus to like have some lighthearted collegiality which is 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 um super mm. important so I'm, I, it's just you know and that's one of the things that I, i'm like really big into like um creating you know um relationships among teachers because i think that it trickles Absolutely. down and end up being really good for the kids and so it was it was yeah. really it was really really cool to um yeah, to well, do relationships that. are everything in education, aren't they? I They're, think, you know, if you can't get your relationships right, it's, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm, and it, right. it kind of came from a place that I could see lots of stuff happening in terms of, you know, the practicalities, people doing stuff around, you know, this is what you need to do for COVID, this is how you need to stay safe, this is what you need to do for your, your school and how to set up your learning. Right. But the thing that struck me that was missing was that, um, you know, usually at some point in the day as a, as a member of staff, you bob into the staff room and you have a cup of tea, even if it's right. only for five minutes. And right. You touch base and you kind of talk about how your day's going. Yeah. And there was nothing like that. And so no. I thought, well, I'll just make one then. And I, I kind of put it out there thinking, well, we'll give it a go. I'll, I'll do it for a week and see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, 80 days later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. And, so, yeah, it's, and it's the, good. And the cool thing is one of the main things I remember is um the first rule of um staff room is yeah. um what happens in staff room. It, it is. Well, we say in staff room oh. stays in staff room. Exactly. Oh, okay. oh, exactly. That makes more sense. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Just because we wanted it to be a safe space for people. So and it did, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had I mean there was a lot of laughing. There were days oh, when a lot. Was, <laughs> literally crying with laughter, but there was also quite a lot of difficult days, you know, some people having a really difficult time, you know, some people lost oh, yeah. their jobs and were upset, some people were losing family members and you know, some people just felt that it was never going to end you know so mm -hmm. there were some days where people would come in and they would cry and you know you wanted the people to feel like actually it's okay to be in here and this is a safe space to do it so mm -hmm. we made a point of everybody was welcome but the rule was you know what you say in here stays in here we didn't right. want anything going yeah, out so it's there. a safe space yeah 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 one of the things that gets me through the school year is just being able to walk into somebody else's classroom and be like <laughs> I always felt I got it right in the school. If the staff could walk into the staff room and go, oh, I've just had the most terrible lesson. Right. <laughs> and, and, and nobody would go, oh, she's an awful teacher. But they'd all go, go, come on, they'll talk about it. And, you know, and, you could, and you'd, you'd kind of, you know, you'd laugh and you'd joke about it. But it's kind of pedagogical because you're unpicking it and you're talking about, well, maybe if you tried this, maybe if you tried that. And, and I, I always wanted that. And I wanted that space there for people to come. And particularly when we started to open up again. Mm -hmm. Lots of people just wanted to say, this is what we're thinking of doing at our school. What do you think? And, and just throw that out there in amongst a group of professionals who were all making similar decisions and saying, well, this is what we're doing at our school. And, yeah. and it was absolutely non-judgmental. And I think that's when you get stuff right. People are much mm -hmm. more willing to talk to you if, you, if you're going to listen to them in a non-judgmental non way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I kind of think, um, as well as all the, the stupidity in there, because <laughs> it really was daft at times, yes. um, there was quite a lot of serious stuff that went on in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. Wait, why are we making a podcast again? Because we like to watch movies and yell about them. They yell about directors, yell about the plot, yell about the acting, but they also talk a lot. But mostly Josh and Cassie yell about the movies. Hey, everybody. I'm Cassie. And I'm Josh. And we are the hosts of the brand new podcast, Josh and Cassie Yell About Movies. Each week, we're breaking down a different film and sharing our unique perspectives and holding nothing back. And fair warning, this is a spoiler-heavy podcast, so yeah, just be aware of that, please.
Do we make jokes or is there anything else? Gosh, I hope so. I have fun laughing at you. Well, thanks. And we yell about movies. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. We upload new episodes on Tuesdays. So hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. All right. So let's talk to you about the consulting that you do. So when you do consulting, do you like, is it for like the Ofsted capacity or in like a private capacity? I am. Um... I, I work for lots of different people. Uh, I, I mm-hmm. mostly work for myself. Um, in England, we have a, quite a diverse system of education. So when I first started teaching, all schools were run by local authorities. Um, in about sort of the, the early 2000s, um, so people started to set up something called multi-academy trusts, where um, schools were taken out of local authority control and, and groups of schools could get together and work together. So they're called MATS. Um, so I do I, I do a lot of work for local authorities. I do a lot of work for multi academy trusts, and I also do quite a bit of work for different companies that um, I either do training for them or I go into schools in an advisory capacity. So it's really mixed, and I go literally all over the country and sometimes abroad as well, but not at the moment. Um, yeah. But yeah, I um, I go everywhere. So you know, from the sort of top northwest of England down to the bottom southeast. Um, mm-hmm. I All try right. not to do that in a day. Yeah. Right. I was going to say, how long do, to drive from the top of the northwest to the bottom southeast? How long does that take? Right. Um, I did I, it once. Um, I was in a school in southeast Kent, which is about as far as you can go. I mean, mm-hmm. southwest is further. but right. uh, And I was in there in the morning. I left at midday and I got to the northwest at nine o'clock in the evening. Okay. Okay. So, so it's, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, for Americans, that's nothing, is it? But for us in Oh, yeah, that's New York. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but for us, I mean, I, I one of my, my vice chair of governors at one school was an American and she used to think nothing of going sort of five hours for the weekend. And all, we'd all be like, what are you doing? Yeah. But, um, yeah. but I, I, I do travel a long way for work. I probably cover about a thousand miles a week. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Okay. So when you do this consulting, when you go to a school, right, you, you park your car, you get out your pad and your pen. Like, what do you look for? How do you know, like, what they need to do or or, or, or what things they're going to overcome? Like, how do I get those eyes so I can, like, see that in the school? I, I, um, I've I usually had a conversation. If it's um, if it's local authority work, I, I know a bit about the school because it's one that I, revis- I visit regularly. If mm-hmm. it's a new school, I've probably had a conversation with the head teacher about what they want. Um, but I usually start with a conversation with the team and say, right, okay, tell me a, a little bit about what I'm going into. Um, and then I go and have a wander. Uh, so it's sort of a assessment by wandering around, really. You can, you just lots and lots of experience of watching children and, and looking for certain things. And you can just spot things in the classroom. And I think it's a real luxury of my job because when you're in it, you can't see it. So I remember in the classroom having people come in and watch children, you know, who, who maybe needed some support, who would say to me, do you realise that every time you say this, this child does that? And it's like, oh, God, I didn't see that because I'm in it and I'm teaching 30 children, mm-hmm. so I can't see it. Whereas somebody just come in and watch it and says, you know, so I, I ask why and what, what's that for a lot. Uh, um, you know, my, my, my nickname sometimes is Little Miss Why because I say, well, why have you got that there? Why are you doing that? You know, and sometimes it's just getting people to think about why do I do that? You know, so it might be something as simple. I do a lot of work on environments, for example, and how that supports children's learning. So, you know, we might look around a, a learning environment and say, well, you know, it's in a school only the other day. And the teacher said to me, they're not using the book area. And I said, right, let's come and sit in it. So we sat down and it's right next to the door. There's a draft coming through. I said, I think we know why, you know, because it's gold. But, until, you know, and it's really seen. And she's like, I can't believe that. That's really obvious. But you just <laughs> need somebody who's not in it all the time. So mm-hmm. a lot of it is just looking with a fresh pair of eyes. But also, I mean, I, I visit probably about 70, 80 schools a year. So you get to see a lot. So that gives you lots of experience, you know. So right. a lot of what I do is stealing ideas from other people. I'm very honest oh, about yeah. it. Yes. You know, yeah. I, I'll say, you know, in this school that I've worked with in, in this part of the country, they've done this and it's been brilliant. You might want to try it. Um, but what I usually do, I, I never tell people what they have to do because mm-hmm. I don't have to make it work. You know, right. so, uh, yeah, but, I mean, it, I don't know the children. True. You know, with the best one in the world, I visit for half a day or a full day. That's not going to give me a full flavor of what it's like to be in that classroom day in, day out. So right. we'll have a conversation and I'll say, right, okay, tell me why you do it this way what's working for you what do you want to change and then we'll talk through and I'll make some suggestions and say try those things but you know ultimately that's got to be the teacher's decision because they've got to do it I, I walk away and get in the car and drive off and that's <laughs> lovely you know yeah. uh, they've got to make it work so and I also think as well I, I hated when people will come and say you need to do this you have to do that because I my personal feeling was hold on a minute I, I studied for four years 
I've got a lot of experience. I know these children, you know, so let's have a conversation and let's discuss it. But don't tell me what I have to do. Otherwise, you know, you may as well just drag anybody off the street and tell them to do it. You know, mm-hmm. we, we are we are professionals. So mm-hmm. uh, you've got to treat people with professional respect. Yeah. And oh, say, yeah. you know, like, let's talk about it. And I think as well, sometimes it's getting under the skin of, you know, what, what the issue is. Sometimes people are just reluctant to change or a bit afraid of change because it's scary. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know what the American system's like, but in England, the states Not are great. very hard. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we've probably emulated a lot of what you do, but our state, <laughs> I'm our sorry, states are really. I, I know. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there the, there was a time in education though where if you had a, a lesson and it bombed, um, you were on a capability plan. You know, if somebody saw a lesson and said that's not very good, you yeah. had a plan drawn up, and you know you've got to get better, otherwise. That really doesn't motivate people to do well because they get really afraid there. Yeah, it, um, we, we do have stuff like that. And I understand the why. Um, mm-hmm. and, and part of it is one of, one of the challenges. So it's, 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 a, it's a mixed bag. And we know education is, is a really, it's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's hard to wrap your head around all the different, you push something in and something pops out in another direction. And yeah. it's, it's, it's whack-a-mole yeah. trying to we fix things. We don't understand what we do. No, I, no, we don't. We, we barely do. We, we, we understand it's little pieces of it. It, it yeah. really is. and It's a complex process, and I, and I see that a lot, you know, but you're right. Mm-hmm. People spin that way, and then that well, one stops. I was going to say, one of the challenges right. is that, I mean, there are people, and it's a very really small group, who are horrible at teaching and probably yeah. shouldn't do it anymore. I don't think the group is that small. Okay, well, I'm going to say it is. I think with the is. amount we pay teachers, it's really easy to... Not get the ones who should be staying in the classroom. Okay, but, but I, I think I, was gonna say, I think there are a small minority, yeah. and I understand why. And you know, I have worked with people who we've had conversations with, you know, and they're really not happy in the classroom. It's not making them happy either. Yeah, um, yeah. it's and most I get of the time. That. And yeah, I, I don't have a problem with accountability, but I do have a problem right. with people on a plan. And see, that's the thing. A lesson that's bombed. Right. right. Yeah, and, and that's right. the thing. The tool is there to help get rid of the people who shouldn't be there, but then it's just gone around, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, let's, let's just, let's just use it to do this as well. Whereas yeah. there's someone who's struggling, who literally wants to be better. There's no reason to fill out any paperwork for that. Let's just have a conversation. Let's talk about it. And like, I know you want to be better. My job is a consultant or as a head teacher or principal or department leader, whatever it is, my job is to support you getting better. So we don't need to fill out any kind of like official paperwork with the district or anything like that. Let's just like, actually like let's schedule a few meetings and you know, a few observations and let's, let's do this as a team. Let's work together and teach together. You know, let's plan together. Exactly. Would you like me to, you know, let's, let's do some team teaching together. Yeah. uh, So that, you know, we can share and we can, you you watch me and pick my teaching apart because, you know, that helps, doesn't it? Watching somebody else with your class, I think. So, you know, all of those things are really important, but I think, you know, it's like any tool in the wrong hands. It's a dangerous thing. So yes, you do need those procedures. But yeah. what I what I have a real issue with is people who go to that. That's their first go to, you know. So I yeah. always say to people that I veered because we have four grades in the UK for, for Ofsted. There's inadequate, requires improvement, good, and outstanding. And I always it's, say, to people, well, so it's I, half I, of them. Half of them are bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I veered between outstanding and inadequate, and um, sometimes in the space of five minutes, you know, because right, you, outstanding because and inadequate is the title of my autobiography. Nice. <laughs> But it's true because you're working with children. And so you can be, you know, you have one of those moments where your lesson's really going like filling yeah. on, and you think, oh, I hope the head teacher comes in now because this is just bang yeah. on. And right. the head teacher opens the door just at the moment where the child's either wet themselves or whack somebody over the head with something. Yeah, or, exactly. Or you're just, you're just mid-rant. You're, and, and usually with a group of parents, you know, they're showing around and you're just going, oh, I'm very cross with you. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. And then you do this sort of big smile. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but but it, it would, but it, you know, the nature of teaching is it peaks and troughs. Yes, yes. And you should, and, and that's part of it. But actually, it's for me, it's about teachers who are reflective who can say, do you know what, actually, that really wasn't very good. And this is why. So this is what I'm going to do next time. Um, that, here's, you know, well, here's you've a, got to have a culture where you can do that. Here's a crazy thing. I don't know if it's taking place over there, but it wouldn't surprise me if it does. A little behind the scenes that I found out, like, um, I don't know, my second or third year. So... Our principals also are observed and, you know, held accountable and all that kind of stuff. So 
it's not like they have a quota, but it's kind of like they do. So they need to have X amount of teachers on a plan so that they can show, oh, well, I've got these teachers. So they've got the documentation that I'm working to like develop my underachievers. So like sometimes they don't, you know, they literally just put someone on a plan because they've got it. There's, Okay, who, we've got to have somebody we don't that... Have that. We don't have that so much, but we do. We are performance managed. So, you know, you have targets that you have to meet as a head teacher. Yeah. And if you don't, yeah. then you don't get your pay rise. And you can be, you know, if, yeah. you, if you consistently don't meet your targets, then you're not yeah. going to do your job and you can go on capabilities. So there's always a line of accountability. Yeah. And even as an, an, as an advisor, you know, the first line in my job description is all your scores should be good or better. So, you know, that, so I then have to hold the school to accountable. My line manager holds me to accountable. Yeah. And the person at the very top of the chain holds yeah. them accountable. So there's accountability all the way down. And, right. and, and I don't have a problem with accountability as long as it's done in any developmental way. And the way I like to work with people is say, right, okay, what did you think of that lesson? What do you think went well? What could be better? Let's work at it. Yeah. Rather than picking something apart and making people feel absolutely rubbish about well, yeah. what's going on in the classroom. Because, you know, should, we can all do that. <laughs> Because we should do it just like we do it in America, because we have no bad administrators. As that's good. Because I don't like, know why that's funny, guys. Because this because it happened to me. So my first year teaching, I got put on a plan for my second year, which I didn't even realize was something bad or unusual. Well, first of all, it was my first year teaching, and it's it yeah, based on so you're bad at it, right? It's, that's yeah. that's your job first. Well, teaching. Yeah, it's I mean, I'm right. My first year. Don't, don't cry in front of the kids. Those right. are the two expectations. So I was so so I got put on this plan, but then when I realized what it meant, like someone, like I, you know, and there's people. By the way, there's people at your school that are on plans that you have no idea, and it's not because they're a bad teacher, and they're embarrassed to tell you because it 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 feels like they're they're, they're less than. Yeah. Yeah. And but but what happened then was every. I knew I wanted to get off the plan because you have to get off the plan a certain amount of time or I don't even know what the consequences were. I, I, I got off the plan. I, I did whatever I needed to do to get off the plan. But every observation from then on is like triple stress because <laughs> yeah. it's like if I don't do it this time, then uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. And there's still, I'm not going to lie. I still have like, still have like a little PTSD from that. I'm, I'm close to the point where I've stopped caring about my observations, but like, but there's, you know, but there's a part of me. I don't think you ever don't care. I think, you know, because yeah. you care about the kids and you want, yeah. you want to do your best. So, yes. you know, I mean, the, 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 the last head teacher I worked for as a teacher was a wonderful, wonderful woman, but she would forget sometimes. Um, and people would come and watch me teach. Um, and she, she'd sometimes come down. There was one morning, I'll never forget it. Kids came in at quarter to nine. At 20 to nine, she just stuck her head around the door looking quite sheepish. And she went, I forgot to tell you, you've got 10 head teachers coming in today. Uh, uh, nice. Sit, sit at the back of my class and watch me speak. Oh, jeez. Ten. Uh, and there's, ten. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because they looked at their gang of nine and thought, you know what we need? Yes, we need even, one more. One more. Yes. And, and it was, yes. I mean, it was a real compliment. They were coming to watch me because it was supposed to be good yeah. practice. But right. it was a bit of a moment where I thought, and I remember thinking, I wish I'd known about that last night. And then I thought, you know what? Actually, if I'd known about that last night, I would have stressed all night long. I probably yes. would have slept. I would have overthought it, actually. And I just I just turned to her. I remember saying, they'll see what they see. Yeah. You know, because yep. this yes. is what I'm doing. It might not be all singing or dancing, but it will be what I do day in, day out. And and it was fine. It was absolutely fine. But she did used to do that to me. Not the 10 was a bit exceptional. But occasionally she would come and just stick her head around the door and say, I'm really sorry I forgot to tell you there's two teachers coming from such and such a school. And you just got used to it after a while. And actually, I yeah. think that's probably better because you don't fret about it. Well, one thing so, that I that I do now that I didn't – I don't know when I started doing this. It happened to me when there was a certain one that came in that I actually felt comfortable doing this with is, is I don't pretend they're not there. Yeah. So – I ask them questions yeah. as if they were a student. I get them involved. I go, do you remember when you learned this back in school? You know, I'm like, see, and most of the time, because I teach math, most of the people that come to observe me, they, they're, they're like, they hate math. And they're, they're like, they don't know <laughs> yeah. what they don't, they don't even know what I'm teaching anyway. If I'm, you know, so, and they're like, oh, I don't, I always struggle with this too. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, da, da, da. So I'll kind of like, I won't like make them the focus, but I'll, but I'll yeah. definitely engage them so that we can kind of like, it, it helps me to relax rather and than it addresses like, the elephant in the room because it's uncomfortable for the kids to just have another person just sitting there doing yes, nothing. Like that's yes. that's really uncomfortable yes. for them. I know there's certain kids that will behave better if they know there's another adult in the room, and if I don't mention them and say that they're there, there's like like five kids to ten kids that have no idea that they're even there. 
I've, I've like I talked to kids. I, got that right, I'm like, if I was in the room and nobody knew I was there, I thought I'd done it right. I'm like, I told you to put your phone away like four times while the principal was back there. You mean the principal was back there? I'm like, yes. You, what do you think I was doing? You know? I'm like, oh. I, I do think that's where management by walking around is better, though. If, if you know you're going to be observed, you build it up into a big thing. Whereas I used to make a point of just bobbing in and out of classrooms all the time. Mm-hmm. And then it just became normal. Um, right. And, right. And, and, I, and, you know, sometimes I could actually be in a classroom for 10 minutes and I'd be doing something with the kids. And one of the teachers would go, what did yes. they were there, Mrs. Sweat? Yes. Uh, you know, and, and that's quite nice because then you think, well, actually, this is what you're doing all the time. You're not putting any show for me. This is yeah. what the kids get in. And that's right. You know, that's yeah. what it should be. Funny story, Mealy. Go ahead. Uh, I don't, yeah, so he was he was a principal and superintendent, and now he's back to teaching in middle school. Um, and so he had a class. It was like his homeroom slash first block. Yeah. And so they found out that his other homeroom classes, because we were doing on this rotating schedule, uh-huh. uh, he, he, like, gave them donuts one day and went over, uh-huh. like, uh, for homeroom, taught them, like, where do we put the fork and where do we put the knife and proper, like, uh, yeah. you know, eating uh, etiquette. Yes. Manners, mm-hmm. Right. So they found out the other classes got it, and they didn't. And they decided to give him the silent treatment. Oh, wow. They all the first block. Nice. And then the principal came in for his observation. Nice. And they wouldn't stop. They just gave him the silent treatment. Oh. And he still has, it's hybrid teaching, so he still has a class on Zoom that he's focusing on while the kids in his classroom are just stonewalling him. Oh, my goodness. He was so outraged. Oh, he had oh, the first day. That's good stuff, though. I mean, it's horrible, <laughs> but that's, no. <laughs> But well, no, but like when you're observing a school, like you keep that in mind. Like you see the kids, and like the goal isn't to make sure the kids aren't being kids. No, no, it's it's really funny. I had one. Um, I was it was an inspection, and I walked into a classroom, and um, there was a there was a seat next to this little lad. A, a top tip for teachers: if you're being inspected, if there is a child that you don't want uh, the inspector to talk to, do not leave the seat next to them empty. Nice. <laughs> But you so gotta leave it there. empty because if there's another kid there, they'll get talking yes. to it. Yeah, I That's know, true. I know. But so it's like you're homing on it. So I go and sit next to this kid, and I can see by the teacher's face he's thinking, "Oh gosh, I can't believe she's sat next to him." You know, <laughs> it's just eye rolling. So I, so I say, "Oh, what are you learning about today?" And he looks at me, and I wasn't getting anywhere with that question. So I thought I'll go a bit more basic. I said, "What are you doing?" He's a junior kid. He's I think year four, uh, which would be about eight, nine. Okay. Okay. He sort of conspiratorially says to me, I don't really know. <laughs> he said, we don't normally do this, you know. I said, oh, don't you? He said, no, we're having a special visit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I said, oh, are you? Yes. Said, yeah, yeah. And then he looked at me and he sort of leaned back and he went, it's you, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Amazing. That's good stuff. I would say to teachers, don't do something special for me. No. Do what you no. normally do because the kids will dob you in every time. I, I, I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've told this before, but it didn't happen in my class, but this kid told me that he, he did it. Um, and he was a very, he was a smart kid, but he very like one of those kids are just a, a leader, but he didn't realize he was a leader, I guess, as, as how I'll describe him. And the, Principal comes in to observe, and the teacher is, you know, doing stuff and doing da 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 da, and getting them all engaged and doing all these little things. And um, he raises his hand, and the teacher calls him and says, "Yes." And he's like, "What are you doing? Why don't you just give us a worksheet and sit at your desk on your computer like you do every other day?" <laughs> oh, yes, that kid is my hero. You can always tell. He then pulled you can the microphone tell. out of his backpack, dropped it on the ground, yes. and walked oh away God. with putting on sunglasses. Oh, that's so good. You know, I mean, it's terrible. You can tell when, you, you know, you, you can tell when somebody's put on a show for you there. Right. Um, right. You know, I mean, I, 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 obviously I work all the way through primary school, so I go all the way from like literally baby rooms to 11-year-olds. Mm-hmm. But a lot of my work is in early years, so up to about five, six-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes I go in a classroom at about half past nine and school started at half past eight, quarter to nine, and it's immaculate. And you can tell that these kids are waiting for me to go there. So nice. the, the teacher can show what, uh, you know, yeah, so the, you yeah. can imagine the kids mm-hmm. going yeah. over to, to this really exciting thing and the teacher saying, don't touch it, she's not been in yet. <laughs> and yep. oh and actually, God. I want to see what your classroom's normally like. I just want to see children yes. and what children do because that's mm-hmm. what i'm there for yeah but i get i get it's, it's because 
it's because we're in this high stakes culture. So I understand that people are worried. And what I try and do with people is break down those barriers. So, you know, I understand the first time they meet me, they probably are a bit like, oh my goodness, you know, this person's coming and they're going to judge me. And then we work really hard. I, I pride myself on working really hard on the relationship so that actually a lot of the times, you know, they'll, they'll say to me, well, you know, this, you know, it looks like this now, but yesterday it looked terrible. And, and they'll be really honest with me because they know. Mm-hmm. That right. I know. So, you know, um, and and they'll say, I'm going to be really honest with you because that's what you're here for. Because they mm. get that I'm there to help rather than to judge. So I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Sunday, 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 June 27th. Join us for Edupod Lusa. There will be over a dozen Edupodcasters. Listen for some rhythm and rhyme. That's a poetry slam, boys and girls. Roundtable discussion. Just some teachers talking about teaching and laughing and having a good time. Role-playing games. Oh, yeah. For you nerds out there, you know you're going to like that stuff. Radio drama. Dum-dum-dum-dum. Ah! And really funny people. At least really funny looking, if nothing else. 1 to 9 on June 27th, Eastern Standard Time. We'll be live streaming. There'll be links. We'll put it on the Twitter. We'll make sure that you know where it is. Follow us at Unprocast if you're not already, because that's probably going to be the easiest way to know when it's going live. June 27th. Free up your calendar now. Thank you. So, but I know we've got like people here who teach, you know, elementary school or, you know, younger kids. So I know you've already hit on relationships and we, and we stress that like, I'm, I'm going to say pretty much every episode. Um, yeah. but what are some, what are some tips? Just maybe some little simple things that maybe people haven't thought about that you, that you find yourself suggesting to teachers over and over again as, as you go about and do your consulting. Um, in early years in particular, think about things from the child's perspective. Ask yourself okay. the question, what is it like to be a child in this classroom? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so I often spend a lot of time sitting down in different parts of the classroom. Like, you know, we'll go and sit in the role play area, we'll go and sit in the book area and say, right, okay, if I were four, what would I do in here? Would mm-hmm. I want to spend time in here? What's it like? What would I play with? How would I be? You know, and, and you know, just looking at things through the child's perspective and, and even something as simple as changing the language that you use. So instead of talking about it as being your classroom, we talk about it as being the children's classroom mm-hmm. and they take responsibility for it. So I spend a lot of time talking about training children to be responsible for the resources so that the teacher doesn't have to do all that. Yes. You set it up, you teach them how to choose it, use it, put it away, you model it, you show them, and then you expect them to do it. Mm-hmm. And actually, I've done that with two-year-olds, and two-year-olds can do it. Yeah. Um, still haven't mastered it with my teenagers at home. I'm not quite <laughs> that way yet. Yeah, because um, I, but... <laughs> I imagine for for um, for um teachers that are teaching young kids that there are lots of them that that, that – that's the last half hour of their day is is cleaning it up the really classroom. Shouldn't be. Right. Really shouldn't be. So what we do is we talk about the fact if you set your classroom up well enough and it's really clear where everything goes. So we have fewer things and we, we make them really exciting to look at. We mm-hmm. we do what we call shadowing. So wherever something goes, we draw a shadow underneath it so that or a photograph underneath it so you see where it goes. There you back. go. And then you model how to use it with the children. So the first couple of weeks you're in there, you're showing them this is what you do with these toys, you play with them, and then you say, Right, we're finished with that, we choose it, use it, we put it away. Wherever you leave somewhere, you should leave it as you find it. So it shouldn't be, if I come to something at half past two in the afternoon, it should look just as nice as it did at half past nine in the morning. Yeah. And that means that at the end of the day, you probably need five minutes to tidy up. But it takes time. You have to you have to nag it first. You mm-hmm. have to yeah. It. You know, right. it's like a mantra. And, and you know, I, I do hear children going around the classroom saying that, but not doing it. And eventually you get to the point where they do do it. Yeah. Um, but what I always say to people is children will do what you expect of them. Yeah. So when people say to me, oh, my children won't do that. If you think they won't, they won't. Right. But if you say, no, actually they will, but you have to show them you expect that and you yeah. praise them when they do. Right. And when they don't, you remind them gently, well, you're not showing respect for our classroom. That's not very tidy. What are you going to do? Yep. They will They will do it. So you say, I've, I've done it with two-year-olds, so they can do it. You're then free to interact in the environment rather than run around tidying up after children it takes a lot of energy on the front end but it but the, the yeah. payoff on the on the on the back end is is is, is huge yeah yeah because at, at, at first it seems like oh you know what it's going to be easier for me to just put it away than Absolutely. watch this three-year-old oh, yeah. or six-year-old like you know that can't figure out how to how to do it we i got voluntold well the good thing was i didn't have to watch standardized tests this week okay and proctor which which was horrible and takes forever so the flip side of that though was i was in the um in the library where kids were throughout the day and a, and a ton of them at the end of the day returning their Chromebooks okay mm-hmm. so we received um close to three thousand Chromebooks wow. I know and so they all have a cord and how do the kids hand you the cord you know 
I'm like, if, oh, and it jumbled, but like they just swatted a I spider web, and <laughs> right? Handed it. Right, and if you if you put three thousand of those in various boxes, when you go to take them out, it's going to be so you literally yeah. have to like I've seen Christmas lights, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. It's like okay, but and I'm not going to do three thousand cords, so like. In comes a group of ten. Here we go again. I'm going to show. I'm going to like you know like like I'm like I'm the stewardess teaching you where the where the exits are for the eight thousandth flight. <laughs> Here's how you wrap up the cord. It's got to look like this. And when then you hold it, and if it doesn't, if if the wires if the wire falls loose when you shake it, you didn't do it right. You know, yeah. you know, and the you know and the kids are like, well, I don't know how to do it. You know, and most of them I was pretty nice. The one kid I did give the like the my my snarky answer. I'm like. Listen, dude, if I put a thousand dollars right here on the thing and said, make this cord look like that one, you can have the thousand dollars. I said, I, the cord would look exactly like that. You'd figure it out. So I know you can figure it out. It's just how much effort are you going to put into figuring it out for me? And it's, it's just that expectation, isn't it? You're right. It's, it's hard work. It, it would be much easier for us to run around after the children, but they don't learn anything. No. Um, right. You have to, no. but it is. It's the oh, they're at school to learn. Oh. <laughs> novel, novel idea, right? I keep you know. forgetting yeah. that. <laughs> Speaking and, of and actually, for, for early years, part of that is, you know, it's not just about learning to read and write and to, to, to learn your basic number. It's learning how to take care of yourself and how mm-hmm. to be independent. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. a big part of what we do. Yeah. So, how do you tie yeah. your you shoes know, and wipe your butt and all that yeah, kind of exactly. stuff? Clean up after and, yourself and eat without yeah, spilling it all yeah. over your shirt. Yeah, right. and, and I think that's when, when people say to me, I haven't got time to teach that. Actually, that's your job because if, you, if we look <laughs> at our foundation stage curriculum, part of yeah. it is your personal and social development. That is part of your job, and it's important. Um, I, so I think we just have to focus on that, really. I'd always upset some of the teachers I work with whenever they like come in and, and start complaining about a kid. Oh, man, this kid just doesn't understand how to do this. I'm like, wow, man, I wish there was someone to teach him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had a few people say to me about, well, I tried letting the children play, but they just couldn't do it. And so they've, they've, they've stopped. And I, 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 no, hold on a minute. Let's just rewind that. Let's, let's, re- let, let's remove the word play and replace it with read. You would not say that. I've, I've tried letting them read, and they don't know how to do it, so I stop. Right. You know, it's it's just no, as just important. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as important as learning to read. If we if yes. we don't teach them how to play, they're not going to know. And play is a really mm-hmm. important thing. Yeah. You know, people really trivialise it, but actually, everybody plays. Adults play. Yes. You yes. know, we're just playing a different way. The good and thing is, doing it right now. So, some, <laughs> somehow you don't have to teach them how to eat paste, though. They somehow, they know how to do that without ever being taught. Oh, I don't right. understand. Just, yeah. Every object into an outlet possible. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. I've had some interesting objects in different orifices as <laughs> well. <but> that's <laughs> a story for another day. <laughs> oh. I just ate, guys. Oh. My favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite, um, scenes from, um, House. I love the TV show House. Do you know the show House? Yeah, Ruth? I do, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, like, he had to lo- he had to like do his like really important job, like you know, so- saving someone from dying. But he always he always had to do hours at the clinic for for whatever right. punishment he was on. So this kid comes in, the mom's like, he stuck little small policemen up his nose, right? And so like so, house has to like take the tweezers and pull the the little miniature action figure out of out of the kid's nose. And then like later on in the episode, like. Now she now he stuck this fireman up his nose, and so House has to pull the fireman out of his nose, and then all of a sudden it's, it, it it like hits him. And he's like, "Oh, okay, hold on one second. He goes and he goes deeper up, and there was like a little action figure of a um of a kitty cat. <laughs> the kid was standing in the rescue. Yes, well, it's logical, isn't it? <laughs> I just thought he was trying to recreate the village people in the sinuses. No, he was. He could have been doing that. Yes, and send the construction worker up next. But um, <laughs> do you know how long it took me to figure out that house is just supposed to be Sherlock Holmes? Oh, well, I didn't realize. Really? I, I guess yeah. so. Yes. And it, and, it's, and uh, uh, who's the He's guy? Very who's very similar, with? isn't he? Omar Epps. Instead of Watson, he has Wilson. Right, oh, Wilson. I guess he does have Wilson. Oh. Yes, yeah, the little yeah. bromance. That had never occurred to me. Oh, because yeah, really and they're both they both had their little. Um, Love with oh, yeah, um, yeah. opiates. Yeah, opium addiction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll buy that for a dollar. Okay. See, I'm a teacher. <laughs> yes. Every day is a school day. <laughs> yes. So um, did you have anything you wanted? You said you had a book, which we have talked none about. Um, <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't. No, I'm not selling anything. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. No, I, I, I haven't. I've, um, Aaron and I are actually writing something, but that will be in the summer. Um, but at the moment, I'm writing the Oxford International Early Years Curriculum for Oxford University Press. Okay, so cool. Anytime you say Oxford, you sound that. smart, just so you know. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, 
yeah um i'm quite i'm i sort of genuinely bewildered and, and thrilled that they've asked me to do it but it's lovely so yeah yes. they approached me in the first lockdown and said we want to do an early years curriculum would you be interested in you know putting a proposal together so i did and thought oh that will be it you know somebody will go and write that and then they came back and said so oh, that's really good would you write it so yes. that's what i'm in the middle of doing at the moment on, on top of all my other jobs okay. so i'm literally halfway through so that launches it should go live on the oxford website in the next couple of weeks and people all over the world will be teaching lessons that i've written so that's cool great. Yeah, I don't know if you want that, but like I've definitely looked at the curriculum I have to teach some years and thought, man, if I could speak to the person who wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> it is really hard, actually, because oh, I, yeah. when, when I work with schools, I always do a bespoke curriculum with them, you know, so I mm -hmm. talk, you know, tell me about your children, tell me about your community, we build a curriculum around that. So, so writing a curriculum that's going to be used in countries that I've never even visited, with yeah. children that I've never met, is very hard. Um, and it's... It's been a real labour of love because I'm, I'm not a big sort of plan person. I, I like to have the, these are my objectives and then we kind of go with what, what we're going to do. Yeah. And I've, I'm having to write out, you know, ask for these More details. Use, yeah. These phrases. Uh, yeah. It's, it's been a real learning curve for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I can't imagine. Okay. Oh, I can't imagine. And while we've got you on, I know you were on her show. How well do you know our good friend? Uh, well, I say good friend, like we've, we've talked to her a couple of times anyway. Um, Toria, are you like good yeah, friends I know with her? Toria well, yeah. Okay, okay. I've never actually met her in person. But you you have not? No, okay. Us neither. Okay. okay, us neither, yeah, surprisingly. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. I do know Toria quite well. So I, do, I, do a, I do a radio show on Teacher Hug as well. Oh, so are you on Teacher Hug? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm on Child of Chatter. I, I got to interview, I've been interviewing some of my um, heroes. I got to interview, um, do you know Michael Rosen? Nope. Going on a bear hunt, really famous English author. He's like, oh, yeah, I know Going on a bear hunt, though. Yeah, well, I got to interview him for Teacher Hug um, and quite a lot of early years sort of famous people. So I was a bit awestruck, you know, you're having a conversation. Yeah. Thinking, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking to this yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. It's really exciting. Yes. It is cool. Uh, yeah, it's it is really great. cool. It's really cool. That's what? Teacher Hug Radio. Yes. Teacher hug radio. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like a British thing. Yes. Awesome. It's kinda of, it's like an internet radio station, right? Basically. Yeah. And there's a link for it in the show notes. Yeah, there is. There is. Yeah. Yes. So my show is um childhood chatter. It's all about cool. early years. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And that's well, why glad we finally we've been talking about it for I don't know, like six months, a year, must, whatever well, it is. Must even be, I think it's about a year ago you said to me you really must come and do a podcast. And it's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's good. It's been really good to talk to you and to sort of catch up because I feel like we used to see each other fairly regularly. I know. Time. I know. I miss yeah. that. I, I don't miss the I reason we had to do it, but I do no, miss it. No. Well, thank you so much, Ruth. You know, I love I you. I think you're fantastic. And stay unprofessional. Thanks for listening, Unprofessionals. Please check the show notes for more information about our guests and just funny links for other things. And here's a little sample of next week's episode. Broski often refers to it as the pandy, and I really, I love, love that it. about him. Because the deal right now is that, you know, prior to this pandemic, education was hard because we had no plan for, you know, mental health, no plan to sort of support the big people as the little people struggles the, struggled the most. We focus a lot of efforts on, you know, what are some resources for kids? What does a curriculum look like? Do we have the best literacy? Numeracy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Very yeah. few times that we said, how's your heart? Right. What's the hardest part about this job? Mm -hmm. Do you, I, I know that you lose sleep over uh, other people's children. Yes. I know. If you could get the top three kids in your head right now, right? The ones you wish you could have back, the mm -hmm. ones who died, right. the life sucking Caillou who made you really question <laughs> your ability to, you should have been a barista, you know? Yes. All of those <laughs> babies. Don't get me started on, don't get me started on Caillou. Oh, he is right. the, he's the worst. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the people who created that show off. should be in prison. Okay, in my in my opinion, they in create the, whiny kids. Sorry, thank you, stupid Caillou. In, indeed, it okay. turned my it turned my kid into a whiny kid. My kid was like whining for like a, a month, and my wife's like, he's just whining all the time. I said, cut the Caillou out, and fi problem fixed. Okay, <laughs> euphemism. Yo, I should use that in class. Yo, cut the Caillou. Yes. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a noun. <laughs> God bless him. Oh. <laughs> The Caillou. In fact, the staff room is typically more full of Caillous than your yeah, classroom. Yeah, anyway, stop Caillouing. Yes. Point.
It's this thing, I think, that, you know, when, when I ask educators to think about that, you know, who are the top three kids you'll never forget? And often if you've been doing this for more than 30 seconds, like those babies just flood into your head, mm-hmm. right? You remember that kid your first year of teaching. You remember that kid just last week. You remember that that dad that you thought something's not right here for this yeah. baby. Yeah. And all of those things flood into your head. And here's what you need to know. If you can get them in your head while you're listening to a podcast, they think about you 10 times as much. There you go. There you go. If you only knew. Yeah. I don't know if that's and, more affirming or intimidating. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little like, ominous. I think there's some days where I have to walk in like ignoring that fact, just being like, I'm just going to phone it in today and we're going to watch a movie and I don't want to think about the fact that I mean this much to this many people. Well, but you know what? And even that's probably the days that you do the best work. <laughs> Is that it's actually not in the in the lessons that you do amazing things at. It's in the moments where you look at some kid and on any given day, whatever you bring is enough. That's part of the if you only knew, because we yeah. think we have to do massively fantastic stand on our head and spit nickels with 67, you know, different. <laughs>